Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Wednesday. It is the 26th day of July, 2023. I hope you're safe and healthy today on this Wednesday, this hump day, this middle of the weekday, and that your family's safe and healthy, and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health, being met today. Speaking of health, blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, along with the first responders, who every day are risking their lives to save lives. And those also that pick up garbage, the dirty work of keeping places clean and disease free. And those that do the humble work of making deliveries for us, for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women out here doing the heroic work of saving teenagers and children from the clutches of child molestation and pedophilia. Like the other day in Long Beach, California, a man snatched a 13-year-old girl from San Antonio, Texas, raped her, brought her to Long Beach. The girl was able to send a note to people in the laundromat, and they saved her. From who knows what would have happened to her, this man, 61 years old, snatching a 13-year-old girl. They caught him. He's up for life in prison. I hope he gets worse than that. But anyway, blessings upon those people that helped save that 13-year-old girl. Double blessings upon them. Also, blessings for those that help people that are in prostitution, Pornography, child prostitution, child pornography, human trafficking, as I just mentioned, sex slavery, double curses on all those like that dude they caught. Double curses on the perpetrators, double curses on the profiteers, double curses on the perverts that create this industry. Finally, double blessings on the homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women, and children homeless in the United States of America and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them. For theirs is the kingdom. So, I'm very excited, as I mentioned multiple times, about this year's Knicks. Um, uh, and one the reason I'm excited is because the depth that they have. Um, very solid, good depth. Of course, people, the haters, and those of you that are, have you know negative issues, they will always mention, well, the power forward is weak, you know, whatever. But at every position... Especially on the wing, I'm finding there's a lot of depth. For example, you got Grimes, now DiVincenzo, and Hart, along with RJ, along with IQ that could play the two guard. Or the, uh, well, IQ could play the one and two, but there's other guys could play the two or the three, whatever they need. So there's a lot of depth at very important position. At the point guard, you have obviously Jalen Brunson, but behind him, you got Emmanuel Quickly, and you still got Deuce McBride. So there's a lot of depth. At every position at the five spot, we have a tremendous tandem with Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hartstein. And I don't know why people are always looking, you know, why can't we get Aiden? Because we don't need Aiden. And then we got Jericho Sims behind them. So the Knicks are very well positioned to make a nice run this year um, in that they're protected from injuries uh, in terms of not only the conditioning uh, that Tom Thibodeau's teams are typically known for, but just the depth and skill level at each position that they have. So, but to me, there's one player, which I keep mentioning, um, that when he starts to get more expanded role, just him alone, see, if Brunson does what he does, which he's going to, whatever he did last year, he's going to do again, even better maybe. Randall does what he does. Some of you keep saying what Randall needs to do to improve his game. That don't matter. Randall is where he is right now. And, you know, that's pretty daggone good for an all, he's an all-NBA player. Somebody, I saw somebody on Twitter do, you know, something on you know, Twitter is crazy. I don't even know why I look at it. But um, I guess I'm hoping to find some sane people there. But the thing is, they were saying, you know, about uh, Randall. Um, you know, you know, we need to do all this and we need to, you know, he needs to do this, that and the other thing. And, you know, and somebody, some fool, some fool writer. Again, you get a lot of writers that are sponsored, you know, by big companies. Um, usually they fit certain profiles, which I won't go into right now. But some of you all know, if you know, you know, um, they have no business writing. They really don't know anything about basketball, but this is what they do. So one of them said, well, the Knicks don't have, you know, a top 20 player on their team. Let me, you know, explain something to you real quick. Top 20 players, the very concrete way in any given year to know if a player is a top 20. As a matter of fact, let's put it even more succinctly. Top 15. Anybody that's all NBA, okay, is a top 15 player that year. 
Okay, so if you're all NBA, there's three all NBA teams, first team, second team, third team. If you're one of those spots, you are officially a top 15 player in the NBA. Okay, officially. Now, Julius Randle has been in one of those spots two out of the last three years. So for two out of the last three years, he has been not just a top power forward, but a top 15 player. Period. This is not poster sales, sneaker sales, jersey sales. This is top 15 in the NBA. Twice out of three years. Like I said, um, you know, I have art with some of the things Julius does, definitely. But there's no doubt the cat is top 15 two of the last three years. And I think it's pretty universally known that this past season, Jalen Brunson got robbed, that he should have been all NBA, which means I think... That most of us, if he, if you are one of these people like me that agree that he should have been on an all NBA team as well, then he's also top 15. Okay. So the Knicks basically have two top 15 players on their team. Okay. For the last three years, but especially this past season. And I expect this trend to continue. Now, if Julius just plays at his all NBA level, 25 and 10, you know, loses some game because of his attitude, trips out, but then takes over other games. If he does that and Brunson does his 68 game, you know, takeover of games, you know, that he does. And everything else remains the same, but this one player, the Knicks are top three, top four team in the East. If Quentin Grimes, I know some of y'all don't understand because some of y'all can't see. I like this kid coming out of Houston for a reason. Tibbs liked him for a reason. The only reason he didn't start more games as a rookie is because the Don, unfortunately, signed Evan Fournier. So he got the first dibs. But it didn't take but a season for the Don, for Tibbs especially, to figure out Grimes is our guy. So he puts Grimes in there. Now, last year, see, in the NBA, there are Roles. What does that mean? That means there's a reason you're on the floor, a specific reason that you're on the floor. Okay. You might be able to do other things, but there's a specific reason. So in the Knicks starting five, Brunson is the number one option. He's also the point guard. Randall is the number two option at power forward. This is what they're being paid to be. Grimes was out there to be the defensive stopper on the wing, which he was. Okay. Can he do other things? Absolutely. And that's what we're going to talk about. But that's why he was out there. So people that are looking at his point totals are missing the whole point. Don't understand roles in the NBA. That was Grimes' role. Guard the other team's best player, especially on the wing. Okay? And that's what he did as a second year NBA player. It usually takes players four years in the NBA to figure out defense. Between how fast offenses move in terms of plays in the NBA, they run the similar plays like basketball plays, your backdoor plays, your give and go plays, your cuts, but they do it at blinding blur like speed. And they set it up with disguises where you can't really see what's coming until it's too late. OK, that's why a lot of rookies get embarrassed. And that's why a lot of people, you know, thinking rookies are going to change a game. Very rarely happens because of that, because of the blinding speed of the game in terms of the defense, especially. OK, and that's why, like a lot of great shooters in college can't shoot that great in the NBA. It's a much faster game. And then when, when you take even with the speed level, it's a much more physical game. It's a much more physical game with much more physical players, and it's much faster. So a split-second difference in being able to get your shot off in college and get your shot off in the pros can change a guy's career. It has happened so many times. That's why there's a lot of great college shooters that are not great NBA shooters because they can be disrupted. It's just it, it's so subtle that you got to be you got to know what's happening to understand it because it happens so fast. So a guy that could, you know that could shoot the ball in college, and you know you think, oh my God, he's got a great shot. You know he's gonna come in the NBA and light it up. May not. 
may not because you have to be able to set your feet and that's really where it is you got to set your feet your feet have to be in position very much quicker and then get the shot off with the same accuracy it's not easy to do that's why they get paid so much money so that is why you had you know um What's this guy's name from Utah? I'm always using him as an example. He went to China, was scoring like 40 a game, but he couldn't even get a shot off in the NBA. There's a guy named Sam Merrill, went to like Utah State or something. Great shooter in college. In college. And he could shoot in in, uh, summer league. But he can't get a contract because it's different in the league. Okay? So, Quentin Grimes, he can shoot in the league. But R.J. Barrett was the third option. That's his role. That's what they paid him to do. That's his role. But you see, what happens at the end of seasons is coaches, and especially like a coach like a Thibodeau, and then the Johnny Bryant, they're going to review everything that happened the season before. See, when you're in the season and you've got your team and you know what you want to do, you stick with your game plan because your team, especially a defensive team, they get better as the season goes on. Just sticking with the same plan. That's why people get frustrated. Tip should change. No, he's not going to change once he has his lineup set because as they get used to their roles, they become better at them. Okay. Now, but in all season is when you examine everything and you look and see what you have and you decide to make whatever changes you're going to make. Okay. So now, this year, so for Thibodeau, first of all, to be starting a guy, any guy, in his second year under Thibodeau, it's a rarity. It's not something he's never done, but it's rare. It's very rare, okay, for him to do that. Uh, He loves Emmanuel Quickly, and Emmanuel Quickly hadn't started, you know, except when Brunson's hurt, right? So this is how it is. So for him to start Grimes and tell you, you know, I'm sitting in from Fournier. Evan Fournier out the rotation. And he handed that job to Grimes, as he should have. Because Grimes' role was defense. But Grimes had a couple of games last year and the year before where he hit at least five three-pointers. Okay? Matter of fact, I think I had that written down somewhere. He hit at least five three-pointers. Let me see. Well, he had... 31 games where he shot 40% or more from three last year. But I didn't count how many games he had at least five three-pointers. I could look it up. But that, to be able to get your shot, to play high-level defense in the NBA, right, and at the same time have games where you could hit five three-pointers or four three-pointers in a game at 40% or better, that's high-level potential, Okay. What I'm telling y'all is Grimes is an all-star in the making. If the Knicks were to let him loose, and that's what I'm talking about right now. I'm not talking about him developing. He's, he's really there. He just needs the opportunity. If the Knicks were to let him loose, run plays for him, okay, and let him get open looks and then let him play make. See, the things that they're trying to do with RJ, that's what they're trying to do with RJ. They're trying to give RJ the rock and let RJ make plays. And RJ, I mean, he's not the greatest efficiency-wise, but you can see the future with him. He's going to become, I, I feel, he's going to become, you know, a really good player at doing that. He's not right now. He has his streaks right now. Grimes right now is ready for that. So if they're going to make an adjustment based on what they observe after the season and go into this coming season, to me, one of the adjustments, and it's really subtle when you think about it, should be Grimes becomes the third option. And Grimes gets more uh, opportunities to shoot. Now, this is also just as important. For that to happen, they need another guy that's going to step up defensively, you see, because Grimes cannot give up his a role as a defensive stopper because he's one of the best perimeter, like I said, it's grind, perimeter defense. It's Grimes, it's Deuce, and then maybe Hart. Grimes, Deuce, and Hart. Those are your perimeter defenders. And, of course, Emmanuel Quickly. Definitely can't uh, discount that. So you got really four uh, perimeter defenders. 
But you need another guy out there so that Grimes doesn't have to worry about always guarding the t- other team's best player without being able to switch because whoever he switches to is going to get done, like RJ. That's why I was talking about IQ and Grimes because one of the many things that makes that duo dynamic is they both can play high-level perimeter defense. See, So now you can put Q, IQ out there with Grimes, and now you're going to really, by doing that, you're going to get Grimes more shots. You're going to get better defense from both of them, overall better defense. And so that that's why I like it. Now, I don't think the Knicks are going to do that. I don't think they're going to start IQ. I wish they would. But I tell you what's going to happen for sure. They're going to play that duel during the course of a game, for real. They're going to play. Those two are going to play together because the numbers just tell you, scream at you. They got to play together. So you're going to have that during the course of a ball game, 48-minute game. I wouldn't be surprised if they got 12, 15 minutes together on the floor. But if you can get, a, again, if RJ can step up on the defensive end. And if they let it be known, that is the team within themselves, you know, we're going to feature Quentin more this year the Knicks would take a big step forward they really would and if you let him do that um like I said he's going to need the 30 games to get acclimated to the new role just take time in the league but then after that you know as you get close to the playoffs you're going to be very happy you unleash this kid because he's got that type of ability I feel like he's got, you know, I don't understand why people don't think he can play make. He really can play make very well off the dribble. Makes really good decisions. What I like about Quentin Grimes, one of the many things I like about him is that he plays within himself. See, one of the some of the greatest players are guys that know their limitations and play within themselves, but do it at a very high level. That's Quentin Grimes. He's not a guy that's a 48-inch vertical jump guy. Okay, he's not that. He's not a guy that's going to give you 15 or 8 rebounds like Josh Hart does, but he will give you five or six boards. He will shoot at a very high efficiency, and he's going to give you all NBA level defense. Okay, when you combine that, and then as a playmaker, he's got a very high IQ. He makes right decisions with the basketball, especially again for a guy that's in his second year. It it really takes guys in the league four years to begin to understand the things that I'm telling you he does right now after his second year. Okay, so. Um, this is a key. If the Knicks can unleash Quentin Grimes this year, you're going to be very happy they did that. Because now you're going to have a legitimate threat uh, to score. He's a high-level foul shooter, um, high-level uh, you know defender. And, of course, playing off the dribble, he makes right decisions, and he knows how to finish at the rim. The, really, we got something here. Most people don't recognize. Somebody said, well, you think Quentin Grimes is the greatest thing in the spread? This is a typical uh, comment from somebody that's, you know, Really far side, either far side negative or far side positive. Grimes could be an all star. Not all stars are not the best thing since sliced bread, but they help you win championships. Okay, and that's what Quentin Grimes is—a championship piece. And so I'm hoping that you know he gets an expanded role. You know, when uh, when the Knicks got Josh Hart, of course there were the fanatics that were like think, screaming for Hart to start, and I was telling you he's not a starter. It's the same with DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo's a better starter than Hart is, but he's not better than Quentin Grimes. He's a really, really good bench piece, a championship bench piece, in my opinion. So I'm not worried about DiVincenzo taking minutes from Quentin Grimes. Um, It's up to Tom to decide how many minutes a DiVincenzo or a Josh Hart get, you know, in the the rotation. But uh, I'm thinking DiVincenzo really going to get Honestly, he's going to get Obi's minutes. I, I really feel like he's going to get Obi's minutes. And um, that's cool. But don't think this guy's going to take over. He'll start once in a while, you know, but I don't think he's going to get, you know, he's not going to get all the Grimes. Grimes, to me, is just as important as Randall and Brunson, if you let him be. And and that's what I'm thinking. I think the Knicks coaching staff, I have enough respect for them. You see, do we have to agree with everything Thibodeau does for him to be a good coach? No. Some of y'all still don't get that. Just because you don't agree with him doesn't mean he's a good coach. And just because he hasn't won a championship yet doesn't mean he won't. Larry Brown didn't win a championship until he did. He had a lot of winning teams, Larry Brown. And and people were saying, well, he's never going to win a championship. He did. Okay? With Detroit. So coaches don't win chips 
until they do. Okay. Sometimes you get a coach that has Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan on your team, two top 50, albeit all NBA players, or you get Shaquille O'Neal in his prime with Kobe Bryant. Well, you know, you can win multiple chips with those guys, you know, even Red Auerbach. I mean, come on. He had, you know, he had, I mean, Heinsohn, he had John Havlicek, he had Bill Russell. He had, you know, not just all NBA players, he had Hall of Fame players. OK, so you can win multiple championships with that. But we're talking about long term sustainable winning. And I believe the Knicks can win a chip with Tibbs. Um, you know, do I agree with everything he does? No, but I'm not supposed to. I'm not being paid to coach the New York Knicks. He is. So uh, but I do believe that he and his staff are going to be looking at what I'm telling you right now. And if Grimes comes into camp healthy, which hopefully he will, um, I'm expecting him to get a more expanded role in the offense. And then you're going to bring your Josh Hartz and your DiVincenzo. But really the most important piece on the bench is Emmanuel Quickly. Because if you can, you know, they're going to sign quickly to a big deal. And they should. He's really worth all that money. He's worth $100 million. I don't know how close he's going to get to that, but he's worth it. So, uh, but when they sign quickly, that's the key thing here. Because you can put quickly at the point guard behind Brunson. You could put quickly at the two guard and move RJ to the four and put Grimes at the three. That's a dangerous lineup. I'm telling you, that's going to be a dangerous lineup. So, um, you know, the Knicks are in good shape. They got really, you know, Hartenstein, they got named him rightly. Hart, he plays with Hart, New York style Hart, as does Josh Hart, as does Emmanuel Quickly. And I believe, the, you know, Dante will also. So, um we're in good shape, y'all. But if they can unleash Grimes, it'd be better than signing any all-star because they would have one. Okay. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I hope they do it. I hope they do. I, I, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that they will. Um, but we'll see. Y'all enjoy your Wednesday. So. Sure.